Hey everyone, how's it going? This is just going to be another casual conversation tonight. Um, I read an article like about an hour ago detailing the job um, market for software developers or, or software engineers. Um, and in the 2022 to 2023 time period, there was still over a million, uh, uh, there, there was a million uh, open jobs that were unfulfilled. So they're, they're suggesting that there is still a shortage of over uh, 1 million qualified technical workers in the, the market. Now I'm in the United States, so that's a job market that I'm, you know, that I'm in, that, that I'm thinking of. Um, so if we take one, <laughs> 1 million, that's hard to wrap your head around. Like it's hard to, it's hard to believe that in one sense because of uh, all the layoffs that we're seeing, uh, particularly at big tech companies, um, and even at you know a, a lot of startups and things like that. Uh, it's it's hard to believe that it, you know when you when you see all like what seems like every other month there's like a mass layoff, uh, whether that's like uh, you know Google, Tesla, or or anywhere else. Um, so it's hard to believe that, but I I, I guess. It's, I guess it's still true that there's still a, a mass shortage of software engineers in the market. Um, now, obviously, for engineers who are, are working, uh, that's that's good news because it keeps salaries really competitive. Um, and they're predicting that by the end of tw uh, you know the 2020 decade, so by the start of 2030, there's going to be at least another quarter million jobs added to the market at least that's what they're predicting they're predicting software engineering as a whole is going to continue just just skyrocketing in popularity for open jobs um so that's that's really good news because that's that that should keep the salaries high and the u.s typically has the highest salaries for software engineering jobs at least with you know in, in, the, in the u.s currency um so but I, one thing that i want to to talk about in relating to there being such a shortage of, of workers um, in software engineering careers is that there, there does seem to be though I, I I acknowledge that there's a shortage of workers but on the other side of the coin there seems to be this this lessening of like a maybe not lessening I'm trying to say that there, there almost seems to be a reduction in the entry level jobs available though I try to keep up with a lot of jobs, just seeing what the trends are, what kind of openings are, are posted, what the requirements are, um, just for my own personal, you know, sake, just so I, I stay informed, but also just to, you know, I'm just because just I'm curious, I'm just really interested to see what the jobs are like, you know, what are they being, what are the posts for? And it, it I have a hard time, honestly, finding a lot of entry level jobs um, that don't require like two, three, four plus years experience with a lot of things. And I think that that's the difficulty is that it, there, okay, you know, there is a shortage, but is the shortage primarily at mid to senior level positions? Because if that's the case, uh, <laughs> uh, meaning of shortage of workers, it's going to be difficult because uh, it, it seems like a lot of jobs that are posted are always mid to senior level at least um, and there's there's always a, a, the fewest amount of jobs that are posted are for junior developers and where this gets tricky is that if if there's already a labor shortage I don't think there's a lot of incentive to for a company if they're struggling to find workers to begin with to open up a junior role and expect they're already short staffed people to train a, a junior developer, assuming that the people are, uh, and they, they take the risk that the junior developer is going to stay more than two, three, four years to, to move up into a mid to senior role and then train the next person that comes along with them in the, in whatever company's technology, you know, they're using. Uh, so that's kind of the gamble. So, it seems like a lot of companies just want to hire senior and expect them to come in and uh, you know already be operable in the in the environment just because they've had experience and that works and you'll find workers with that 
but it becomes difficult because what do we do with all the, the new grads who graduated, right? What do we do with all the people who have less than two years experience? Um, and honestly, it seems like mid, it seems like the mid level software engineer positions are just being uh, applied. Like they're like every new grad, it, it would seem like they would have to apply to mid level positions because there is a shortage of junior developer positions posted. Um, so I don't really know what the this this is like the tricky. There's a tricky balance I feel like to all this, right? If if you're a company that posts primary or you know hires primarily senior developers, which is a lot of companies, right? Because let's face it. They have you have a product or service. You're making money on it. You're depending on your your you're depending on the service being available. You're depending on you know x number of features being added to it. And you're depending on a, a certain level of skill set to maintain this you know whatever it is and keep bringing in money. There's risk inherently associated with bringing on someone just out of college into that. I and I get that, but on the other side of the coin. I think that there's risk too hiring a senior developer because of the simple fact that they bring so much, so much more experience that they might be harder to train to that specific company's environment. Um, and the, the 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 problem is that if we have such a large pool of new grads, right, and they're all unable to find entry level positions. What are they doing? What, where, where, you know, where, what happens? And so, if new grads aren't able to satisfy the labor shortage, and that labor shortage is completely dependent on uh, mid to senior level people filling those spots, well, that's a finite pool. You know, you can't just jump to to mid or, or senior, right? You have to <laughs> you have to start somewhere. Um, and and this is the this is like where it just never makes sense to me. So if you have a team that you only hire senior developers on, well, you know where how where is the training happening? Where where is the junior, where are the the new grads supposed to learn the skills on the job? Because let's face it, you don't learn you learn you don't learn like eighty percent of the actual software engineering job at school, right? You learn all the theoretical stuff. You learn like algorithms and like the the syntax of whatever language you choose to, to learn but you don't learn system design you don't learn like uh how you know one microservice talks to another you don't learn like deployment stuff you don't learn cloud you don't learn there, there's so many other aspects to software engineering that go along with it that you have to get on job training for unless you do your own personal projects but even then, it's like that, that still doesn't count in a sense for your professional experience. So I, it, 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 I almost kind of laugh because whenever, whenever I read an article or a statistic that says there's a shortage of uh, software developers or you know qualified technical people in the job market, but then you see all these new grads like just getting laid off from a company like you know like well how do you know how do you reconcile that um so it's a it's a crazy market out there really is um i haven't really seen a lot of junior developers being posted i don't know if you all have seen more than i have but i mean i'm looking on the same sites probably that you are probably uh linkedin is my probably my number one and two is probably indeed um and it's it what's funny is that like so many posts that i come across is like they get hundreds of applicants within days so i don't know i don't know it's it's a it's a real curious time um and and finding a job at a big tech company it comes with that inherent risk of there might be mass layoffs right that we read about happening last year or whenever it was um, you know, working at startups has a huge amount of risk. I've, I've met people who have worked at a startup for, it was like eight, eight months to a year. And then, you know, you get laid off with no, with no warning the next day. Right. 
but the startups, you know, the money's probably really good and it's probably remote. So it's like, you know, you, you just, you take that benefit with the assumption that you probably may only be there a year unless they get, you know, continued funding. Um, so in, in it's, it's, it's a real tricky environment. Um, I really do. I, I really do worry about the advancement of a lot of these jobs, um, software engineering jobs, just due to the fact that it seems like the there's an increase of hiring exclusively for senior engineers. Um, so for me, I I started primarily through internships, and then you know you just. You, you just mass apply right afterwards for for a job and then you just you hear back um but the job that i got you know my first job was not remote right it was in the office so i happened to live you know nearby somebody somewhere where, where they're hiring um so a and another factor to this that i don't know if it's going to help or make it worse truthfully is i don't know if working remote is reducing the job or the labor shortage for software engineering jobs. I really don't know. I don't know if workers having the luxury to work remote uh, is 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 helping people find jobs, or is it's making it so competitive that you have like senior engineers applying for junior roles just because it's it's remote. I don't know if that's happening. And if that's if that's the case, then you'll have an inherent shortage at higher level positions because they took a, a lower level position because it's remote. And that's happening. That's that's happening. People are taking cuts and uh, lower positions because it's remote. And I, you know, that's a real curious factor. So there's like so many factors that that potentially go into you know, how, how we look at this labor shortage and how to make sense of it. Because I don't know if we can just, I don't know if we can just, you know, flippantly say that like, oh, there's a million unfulfilled jobs. Like there must just not be enough workers to fill those jobs. That that might be like half the story, but I wonder what the other half is. You know, I wonder how all the, just <laughs> the, all these factors have contributed to that story. Um, and the other part to this um, is what are these jobs in? You know, what are they requiring? And I think we touched on this last time is like there's a growing list of requirements needed for um, a lot of these jobs, right? That didn't used to be there. I think cloud technologies has introduced a lot more um, assumed knowledge that employers have about uh, the engineers applying to these jobs that might not be true uh cloud infrastructure like aws azure uh, uh those two things have dedicated jobs associated with them that you can specialize in but where it gets tricky is that a lot of times mid to senior roles ha has that kind of like subtly included so it's like you kind of just assume that you know or are familiar with a lot of cloud services as well as like how to deploy to the cloud and things like that and that becomes tough because again like we talked about you you don't learn that at, at, at every place you go you really have to learn that through either self-study or you just happen to get lucky in the place that you work as a real hands-on environment to that stuff um but the, the one factor that is the big limiter to that stuff is cost. You know, it's great. Like you can, cloud infrastructure is, is fantastic. It does everything you need to do. But there's a, there's a cost associated with, with all that stuff, right? Like if I use Lambda in AWS, there's a cost to using Lambda. If I use, uh, if, I, if I create an S3 bucket, there's a cost per read and write on there. If I use like, uh, I'm trying to think what, like DynamoDB, there's a large cost, right? Or if you use Firebase, there's a massive cost. And it's like that that is a limiter for someone like me who's out of school and can't use like the educational credits to make a free account to try like the free tier of those services, right? Because like some of like the cloud databases have a cap of like 500 uh, requests, like 500. 
that that depending on what you're making, you could fill that up in like a second, right? So then it's like then it becomes a mute point because then it's what am I going to pay a dollar per request? I go, you know, you go broke in a second, right? Like, so money is the biggest factor, I would argue, for people not being able to learn, you know, cloud infrastructure in a way that's like that that is holistic because free tiers are great and they get you they get you introduced to the stuff but to honestly make a application that gives you experience using a lot of like the whole system you you don't want to just be throwing your credit card on there and just testing stuff out that's where you get like rack up a huge bill um especially if you forget to turn stuff off right so it the cost is the cost is a big issue and I, so when you add with the introduction of cloud technologies into all this, it's like you just are kind of, I think it's kind of assumed that you know a lot of that stuff um, as well as like the deployment side of things. And that's where it gets real tricky, right? Like that's, and I, I worry about the, those kind of skills kind of slipping into junior level job requirements right because you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna learn that in, in, in school of course not like you know what i mean like you're not gonna know that as a junior dev i didn't know that stuff i learned that through through working um so i hope that you know in the future that stuff doesn't continue to grow into requirements um because i only think that's going to hurt the hurt the labor labor shortage even more um, yeah, if you have any thoughts on this, uh, or maybe if you have any idea of how, how to, you know, per perceive that number of like the, 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 the already existing labor shortage and the projected outlook in 2030, you know, let me know your thoughts on that and how maybe you would approach that, that, that issue. Um, yeah, that's, that's really all I got today. I thought, I thought that was an interesting little, uh, bit of information I was reading about. So. Anyway, yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.